here today. Oh, not really. Welcome to If These Walls Could Talk. I am your host with the most, Wendy Stewart. And Tim Moss is pulling up the rear. I swear he is. You're going to get to see him too. I hope everybody has had a really good week. We are very lucky. We have not been hit by the hurricane this happened. Thank God. And I did have one little mishap this week, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I did. Um, I was fixing the umbrellas on my deck outside my house in Pennsylvania, where I go on the weekend. And Mr. B came and stung me. That's right. So right now, my thumbs are not the same size. And you know what they say about size and thumbs and things like that. But I, I digress. Anyway, I am very happy to bring my co-host on tim moss where are you tim come on oh down. my god i just got out of the shower oh but you're, you're <laughs> i'm running nice. late yes you're all yes. nice and clean and, and this is, you you coordinated yes. your towel with what i'm wearing today you see i meant to do that <laughs> yes so this is what i look like when i just step out of the shower voila oh you're all look at it very nice <laughs> and i must say look, look at your no hair. i would all good was, because most uh, of the time it's it can be bad in this weather, right? Right. Well, I'm just I'm just walking in the door because I had to get a COVID test this morning, which came back negative. Yay! Oh my gosh! Thank because you. I just returned. I just returned yesterday from Florida. I was down there for several days. We had we took Fifty Shades of Gay down to Orlando. It was okay. a wonderful time. And then I rented a car and I went to visit my cousin who I hadn't seen in probably fifteen or twenty years. Where is your cousin? Days with them. What's that? Where is your cousin? Outside of Ocala about 20 miles outside of Ocala. horse country. Does your cousin have yes, anything to do with horses? No, they do not. <laughs> but yes, it is horse country. That's right. That's what but I know. yeah, it was, it was so glorious seeing yeah. them, spending time with them. It was a really fabulous time. But they live like out in, it's hard to explain. It's out in the countryside of Florida, which means like, you know, where you can take the, uh, they live on a lake, but it, it, where you can take like the airboats, so oh, he I've done that. Out. Yeah, that's he great. Took me out, but he took me out on his wave runner in this lake that has moccasins and alligators. I figured. Did you see which I'm not into Which I'm not into either one of them. <laughs> but and then it broke down twice out in nowhere. No, no, nice and I didn't bring my phone. Yeah. It was it was a little concerning, it's but it was very, very fun. And I, I we made it back and I had a great time. It was okay. Wonderful. Did you get to see an alligator though? That's what I need to know. No, not this trip. Thank <laughs> God. Usually <laughs> when I go down into that area, I always see a snake or an alligator. They always have to come out and say hello or something. But anyway, so hello, oh, I, what's that? Hello, New York. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, oh my gosh, today's guest, I cannot I, say enough I am very about excited. Him. You and this guest, I know, go way back. Yeah. This guest that we have today is fairly recent for me, uh, mm -hmm. really around COVID. So many great things that did happen during COVID, if you can even say that, were relationships that we started to have with people virtually. Mm -hmm. And this is, yeah. this person I have never met in person, if you can believe it. But uh -huh. you know what? You don't need to because <laughs> to know him is to love him. Everybody he knows is. his post, MC, entertainer, you name it. He's interviewed them. He's well known for his shows. Richard Skipper celebrates creativity in the age of COVID. And I have to tell you, if you haven't been interviewed by the Richard Skipper, line up for it because he really makes every person he interviews feel like a star. Without further ado, welcome Richard Skipper. Yay! Hello everybody, <laughs> happy Wednesday, happy September, happy rainy day here in New York, because you know if it rains on the first day of the month, it's gonna be a lucky month. Who so, told you that? I like that. Up. Where did you hear that? Is that you an know, old if it, if it rains on your wedding day, if it rains on the opening night of a theater opening, that it's I know. just it, it's it, you know it's an old wives' tale. But I, I take everything I can get. So I'm yes. always looking for luck. I'm always looking to celebrate. You know, I begin my shows, and thank you for that incredible introduction. But I'm all about celebrating. 
No, I, I know. Think, you totally are. You're not about old wives. I know that much, Richard. Well, I love a lot of old wives. You know, old wives, new wives, young wives, divorced wives, <laughs> wives that want to be divorced, wives that are getting divorced. I celebrate them all. <laughs> I, that is something I really love about you. My introduction to you, really, the pandemic happened and I, you saw things I was doing uh, virtually and you got in touch with me and you told me uh, you wanted me to tape something about uh, Richard Skipper celebrates. And I'm like, I had heard your name, but who is this guy? And I'm like, why the hell is he celebrating anything? We're in a hellhole when this happened, right? They shut New York down. Performers were left out in the cold. If anybody, you know, performers, musician, anyone that was an entertainer. And all of a sudden I go to your site and I, I love your whole positive take and mm -hmm. spin on things and the support that you give to our performing community. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you do this, Richard? What is it mm -hmm. within you that makes you such a ray of light? Well, one of my favorite movies of all time is It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. And the philosophy of that movie is what if? What if our lives never happened? What if you and Tim had never met? What if you and I, this day did not happen? What mm -hmm. if I said no to you instead of yes to you? Oh. Every single moment of our life is based on a what if moment. That's there are these um, what if moments that are happening constantly. And as we go through life, I believe that we have choices also in terms of the way we respond to things. Mm -hmm. um, we are living in a culture right now. Um, social media is ripping this country apart. I believe that the intent of social media, if you look at the history of Facebook, for example, Facebook was brought, uh, was brought to bring, it was created as a dating site yes. at mm -hmm. Harvard University yes. for College. students to get to know a little bit about each other and what was happening on the campus. But it also had a negative side because there were some students that were excluded from being right. part of that site. And I think that we go through life with a lot of exclusivity. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to exclude people. I don't know about you, but I was that excluded kid. Yep. I remember when I was in school, and I'm going to mention names. There yeah. was a, there was a girl that I was in school with, Terry Kersey. Oh, and you mentioned names. There you go. I'm going to mention names because you know, and I've mentioned her name in my show before. Right. I was invited to Terry Kersey's party, and I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. It was the first big party I was invited to. The approval. I was. It was the approval. Yeah. I was in the bathroom and I heard her mom say, well, we had to invite him. We invited his sister and it wouldn't be right if we didn't invite him. Uh, and uh, I overheard that and uh, I came out and I said, Miss Kersey, may I use your phone? And I called my dad and I said, can you come and get me? I don't feel well. And my dad came and get, got me and I never told him why. I just said, I want to go home. And I didn't want to be there anymore because I didn't want to be anywhere where I wasn't wanted. Yeah. And, you know, and as I've gotten older, you know, and I've reached a point in my life, I don't want to be where I'm not wanted. Right. There are a lot of places where I do want to be wanted. We all, we both agree with you on that. Yep. And I think that there's, you know, uh, you know, if we go through life, you know, and, you know, treating people with such, a look of disdain. Mm -hmm. If you don't like something, change the channel. If yes. you don't like something, why is it that with every thread on Facebook that we feel that our opinion needs yeah. to be yeah. heard? If you don't like it, you know, hit the snooze button for 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, leave that person, right. um, block that person, unfriend that person. Um, you know, most of the people, if you go down your friends list right now, I can guarantee you that you don't know 
sixty percent of the people. Okay, they, hold on, but I, I got. Oh boy, you opened this up, Richard. I'm ready to roll. With it. I love you to death for doing this. Here, I thought we'd be talking celebrities. Let me tell you how I, let me tell you how I look at it. I am very positive, like you. My glass is always. It's not even half full. It's full. Okay, this is how I deal with Facebook. I do know every single person on there. If I get a friend request and I look at the person's background and I can see by their post, not my cup of tea, ain't coming on my list, number one. Number two, I don't, and I've told Tim this, I don't get sucked into the, the evil drama or the political opinions or anything else. If someone is wow. on there that's a friend of ours, that needs a, a little pat on the back that day. I know I can do that just like Tim can do that and you can do wow. that. The three of us and a lot of other people, we have that power. We have the power to use our energy in a positive way. Amen. That Amen. is how I use Facebook. And as far as like the other stuff goes, mama ain't going to deal with it. I and love you for that. But you are, other, you are the exception to the rule. That's the true. other way, we're all in the entertainment field. It is a great way to not only promote our stuff, mm -hmm. anytime Tim does something or you, Richard, uh -huh. I share, it lets the world know, oh my God, these incredible people are doing something positive. This is, to me, how you approach social media. I do see on there, there's people I used to be friends with. I checked their sites. They're still bragging, right? Everything on there is a brag about what they have, what they're doing. Oh, look at me. Look at my husband. Look where I'm traveling to. You know what I say to that? You are worthless. And I'm not <laughs> no, but can I say something about probably that? coming from a place of insecurity in my opinion. <laughs> yes, but you also have to look at, you know, you're not seeing everything. Mm -hmm. right. And you have to understand that sometimes that person may be there to build themselves up. Totally. I saw a post last night from a friend of mine, um, you know, who it was a very sad post uh, where he feels worthless. Uh, uh -huh. He feels worthless because he uh -huh. feels seeing the things that everyone else is posting that he right. doesn't measure up to everything that everyone else is doing. Uh -huh. There are things, there are events that happen in New York that um, I have never been asked to be a part of. Um, I have been in New York. I will put it out there. I have been in New York. Um, I have been part of the New York City cabaret scene uh, for 40 plus years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have never been part of the cabaret co uh, uh, convention. Um, I've never wow. been asked. I've never wow. been asked. Wow. I've never been asked. I never. Wow. I probably never will be asked. That mm -hmm. is not a measure of whether right. I'm good enough or not good enough. Right. It's a measure of the people that are making those decisions. Bingo. Uh, they decide Bingo. whether or not they want me to be in that. And mm -hmm. they're perfectly fine. I saw. I also have never appeared in Wicked. I also have never appeared in uh, Phantom of the Opera. Right. I've never appeared in a lot of things. <laughs> you know? So, but there are always, there always will always be, what was the girl's name at the party? Oh, the girl. What, yeah, oh, the girl at the party. What's the name? Terry Kersey. There will always be Terry Kersey's out there. All right. I, I love that. Right. 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 Sentence I'm going to use. Oh, there's another Terry Kersey. Right. <laughs> right. Your name's going to be dragged all over, Richard. Today. And you know, when when Danny and I got married, um, the venue that we found, and it was based on budget, we could only you know we could afford to invite 160 people. That's we could have easily invited 300, uh -huh. but we couldn't afford to invite 300 people. The fact that 160 plus people were not invited to our party had nothing to do with their measure of worth. Right. It was a measure of what we could afford at that uh -huh. time. Uh -huh. And, you know, and that's the way things are. So when I get up each day, I look, you know, when I reach out and I, every single day, I set a goal for myself with my interviews and I reach out to major celebrities every day. Okay. And sometimes I get a yes and sometimes I get a no. And a lot of times I get a, no, a maybe and sometimes I get a check back in six months. Uh -huh. um, right. 
I even had someone tell me um, a couple of months ago, your platform is not big enough for my client. Mm -hmm. Yes. In there. Mm -hmm. And so I get it. Um, I get that that is not what they're looking for. But mm -hmm. I will tell you something. And for those people who are out there, you know, you may not think that if these walls could talk, it's not a big enough platform for your client. But I will tell you, if your client comes on this platform and five books are sold, mm -hmm. that's five books that are sold. Right. You may go and do a TED Talk for 5,000 people and not one book is sold. Mm -hmm. right? So it's, yeah, a matter, it's a matter of showing up at the table. We right. Know. But your your attitude of that, as far as again, already knowing your worth, your self worth, that is a very ev that is a very evolved understanding. Right. right. And is, this doesn't happen overnight. And let exactly. me tell you something. That doesn't mean that I don't go down the rabbit hole. Right. So right. I do from time to time myself. Tim, I'm, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, we're human beings. I have my moments. You know, one of my sayings is stay in your lane with your blinders on. That is I will, Richard Skipper right there. I love but that. I will tell you from time to time, I take my blinders off. Mm -hmm. And when I take the blinders off every single time, I it takes me off course. Mm -hmm. And when I get off course, I feel bad for it. The yeah. other day I was talking to one of my, you know, I have a team of people. We get together once a week and we brainstorm. And, you know, we we are our accountability partners and we just come up with ideas. Let's try this, let's try mm -hmm. that. Let's throw our spaghetti against the wall and let's see what sticks. And these are just ideas that we throw around. Some of them are good ideas. Some of them we try it and it may work and it may not work, but we try these ideas. And the other day, and I will admit this, I, I, you know, I was talking to one of my team members in a private conversation and we were discussing another podcaster and I made a comment about that podcaster. And then afterwards I called her up and I said, I apologize. And mm -hmm. she said, what do you apologize for? I mm -hmm. said, I never should have said that. Mm -hmm. It Again, was very evolved. It was wrong of me to do that. You know, recently I posted something on Facebook about a major Broadway star and uh, a controversy that she found herself in. Mm -hmm. And after I posted that, I, I walked away and it wasn't based on anything that anyone else had said. It was based on what is my mission statement? Mm -hmm. My mission statement Good. is that I wanna celebrate. Mm -hmm. And by my posting, what I posted about this particular performer, I was not celebrating her. Mm -hmm. I was jumping on the let's tear her down bandwagon. Right? Yeah. And that's not who I am. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I realized that, that, I, that I was on that bandwagon, I went in and I took the post down and I apologized. But that's the difference. Yes. That's definitely the difference. You took the blinder off for a second. That happened. You put it back on. Right. That's, and you, that, apologize, yes, and you apologize. You ate that humble pie. I think that that is mm -hmm. a really important thing. If you have integrity, you have to realize when you've made a mistake or when mm -hmm. you're wrong or if you yeah. hurt somebody's feelings, whether it's intentional or not, you have to be able to say, I am sorry. I did not mean to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. I am not a saint. I am not perfect. <laughs> I, I make mistakes. Some days I make more mistakes than other days, but I get up each day. I have a goal and my goal each day mm -hmm. is to be 1% better today than I was yesterday. I yes. That. I love that. That's yes, such I an love amazing. That. Now, now you had, you had mentioned earlier, um, Danny, I love Danny, your husband. You've got yeah, such I want to hear about Danny. Husband. I don't know Danny. No. I haven't met Danny. So introduce her to Danny. Tell her, tell her about well, Danny. Danny and I have been together going on 32 years. Wow. Um, we were one of the first couples to get married when we were legally wed. Right. One right. of the positive things that Cuomo did um, as the governor of New York. 
Um, so we were one of the first one, uh, 100 couples to get married. That was 10 years ago, um, still going strong. Um, and um, Daniel Sherman um, is a landscape architect. Um, and, I t and I say to him quite often that when he passes on, hopefully I will go first because I can't imagine it the other way. Um, mm -hmm. But when he passes on and he gets to the pearly gates, St. Peter's uh, is going to walk up to him and say, here is your purple heart because you have earned it. But is not a piece of cake. <laughs> you know what? I'm also long term. I think my husband who does our lighting for the show is here. Alan, what has it been? 38 years? I met Alan when I was 21. We did not get together till 30 till I was 32. But let me just tell you, it's been a ton of years. Yes. Yeah. I, I know about that purple heart. Um, <laughs> Believe me, I do. But I'm curious how um, we, for all intents and purposes, call these partners. They are our soulmates. Yes. We mm -hmm. are going through life with them. How how did you and Danny meet? And where were, I'm curious, where were you evolved as Richard Skipper to attract this person into your life? Well, the funny thing is that I wasn't that evolved as Richard mm -hmm. Skipper when I met him. Mm -hmm. I was a singing waiter at Marie's Crisis. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, it was Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it was um, a Friday night um, after work. Um, and I we were cleaning up and the bartender, G. Jan Jones, said there was a cute guy in here tonight and he was interested in you. And I said, and you didn't tell me? <laughs> he said, he's going to be back on Monday night. I said, how do you know? He said, I told him it should be slow on Monday night to come back. <laughs> I walk in at four o'clock to set up on Monday and Danny was sitting at the oh. bar. Oh. I walked in. I went and introduced myself. I said, were you here on Friday night? And he said, yes. I said, were you here to meet me? And he said, yes. Oh. And um, he stayed for the entire shift. And uh, and then when the shift was over, uh, I asked if he wanted to go for breakfast. We went to the Sheridan Square Diner, which is no oh, longer yes. there. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the Sheridan Square Diner. We went to the Sheridan Square Diner, and we sat there. At Tiffany's? Uh, well, Tiffany's was uh, across or, the street. Around the corner. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. was still there. We went to the Sheridan Square Diner. We sat wow. there and talked till seven o'clock. And then he said, I've been up all night. I need to get some sleep. Um, he said, where do you live? I said, 119th in Amsterdam behind Columbia University. Uh -huh. um, I said, where do you live? And he said, Rockland County. I said, where is that? <laughs> and he said, across the George Washington Bridge. Um, he said, I can drop you off if you'd like. And I said, sure. So he got me to my apartment. And I said, listen, you've been up all night. No funny business. If you want to crash at my place, you can. Oh. And he said, sure. So he came up and we both went to bed. We both went to sleep. He got up at one o'clock to leave. And he said, I hope to see you again. We exchanged numbers. He left literally seconds after he left. I got a phone call from the house manager of the Dar Douglas Fairbanks Theater, where Nonsense was playing at the time. And he offered me house seats for that night's uh, performance of Nonsense. Oh my gosh, a gift from the universe. And um, I called him and left a message on his answering machine. Yeah. He wasn't even home then. And I said, I have two tickets for Nonsense tonight. Would you like to go and see the show? He called me back and said, yes. He came and picked me up. We went to see Nonsense. We went to wait to hear this. The Cottonwood Cafe, remember that? Oh my Bleaker and Bank Street. No wow. longer there. We had dinner there. I was just about to open in an off Broadway show called Men of Manhattan. Um, we opened. The show was a huge success for me. Um, Danny was the office manager for a company at the time called Schnadelbach, um, which is a landscape architect company. This was before Danny started his own firm. Mm -hmm. And Danny arranged his schedule so that he would have off on Mondays and Tuesdays, which were our dark days in the theater. We rented a beach house in Kachog. And every 
night, Danny would pick me up at the theater after the show was over. And the entire cast, there were seven guys in the theater, all gay, except for one guy who was straight, all the guys and their partners, and the straight guy and his wife, uh, we would all go to the beach house and oh. spend our days off. Um, we did that all summer long. Oh my goodness. What a, what a charmed memory, really. <laughs> and that was how, you know, and we bonded and we literally have been together since the day we met. Wow. And wow. I, that was Memorial Day weekend and I moved in with him um, on September, well, uh, September 10th was when I moved in. And that's coming wow. up. We're, we're oh. kind. Yeah, that's that's going to be a day to celebrate. So beautiful. Right? <laughs> well, if Russ Woolley is watching this, I love Russ Woolley. Well, I love Russ, Russ as well. And Russ Woolley it. says you celebrate more anniversaries than anybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, first kiss, first. <laughs> yeah, my friend David Joseph and his partner Daniel as well. They celebrate every anniversary, but when you meet someone that you love so much, oh, oh, all of these yeah. moments, these milestones in a person's life are important. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's important oh, to goodness. mark those milestones. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, and to celebrate them. Yes. Now, um, you and I first- And, and excuse me for just a oh, moment. Yes. <laughs> interesting uh, interesting mo uh, thing, Danny's mom and I, shared a birthday as well. Oh, wow. Oh, well, uh -huh. that's really common. Right. Yes. Wow, what is the day? You don't need to tell me the year, but what are the numbers? I'll tell you the year, February 11th, 1961. Mm -hmm. There's all those ones in there, yes. wow. Yeah. Um, now you and I you and I met at uh, the Iguana. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, wow. I think Pam Hamilton had recommended that I go to meet you Wow. And so I called and re and and arranged to interview you and Dana Lorsch, the one and only Dana right. Lorsch. Oh, I, I know. I can still hear her laugh. Still hear that laugh. Um, the, the, you were hosting um, Wednesdays at the Iguana. Wednesday night at the Iguana. Yes. And um, tell us a little bit about that and that experience because you were kind of, you created like the center of the cabaret community. You brought like the entire cabaret community together. Well, he sounds like he was the nucleus of the cabaret yes, community. Yes, absolutely. Well, what think. happened was that, um, uh, uh, credit where it's due, mm -hmm. Joan Crow had created this thing called Hump Night at the Iguana <laughs> uh, prior to this. And every Wednesday night, she tried to bring the world of jazz and comedy together. Uh-huh. Well, the jazz world and the comedy world are two different things. Yeah. And they were not coming together. Mm -hmm. No reflection on Joan. It just right. wasn't happening. And if you also know the Iguana, it was not the right vibe for that venue. So it just wasn't happening. So she had tried for some time to do this. And she was going to be launching a new CD. And she was going to be launching the CD at the Metropolitan Room. So she called me up and she asked me if I would be interested for five weeks to host Hump Night at the Iguana. And I said, first of all, can I change the name? Uh, Wednesday Night at the Iguana, because I said, I don't think anyone knows what Hump Night at the Iguana means. <laughs> what does it mean though? Well, well Hump, it's Hump Night is getting over the hump of the week. Okay, Which is Wednesday. It. Wednesday is known as Hump Day. Oh but yeah, it, I'm sorry. Of course, I my mind was going somewhere else. Like exactly, <laughs> Wendy. That's, that's, the the <laughs> that's the if point. That's the point. If you understand that, okay, go on. Thank so, you. So uh, she <laughs> said, "Do whatever you want to with it." And Dana and I had met. I have to tell you, everyone, how I met Dana Lorge. So my publicist at the time was a woman named Phyllis Raskin, and Phyllis Raskin had a party. And I was at the party and I meet Dana Lorge. Now, some of your viewers are gonna remember Dana. She was this flamboyant, over the top character like Joan Collins. She dressed to the nines. She was a shopaholic. She never wore the same outfit twice. She was constantly buying things. She was just flamboyant, bigger than life, anti-mame. Um, yeah. Dolly Levi, all of these characters rolled into one. 
So I'm at this party, I meet her, and this guy is playing the piano. And I said, why don't you get up and sing? I've never met her before in my life. She looked at me and she says, what makes you think I can sing? I said, well, look at you. You look like a singer. <laughs> I can't sing. She said, well, I sing obscure songs. I says, well, I'm sure he, he may be, you know something that you sing. She says, I'm sure he doesn't. So I go to the piano and I said, would you play something for her? He said, sure. What would you like to sing? She said, nothing. I only sing obscure songs. He said, like what? <laughs> She said, well, I sing a song called I'd Like to Hate Myself in the Morning. He said, I wrote that song. Oh, get out. I swear to God. She said, sure you did. He starts to play it. She said, I do Shirley Bassey's arrangement. He said, <laughs> you arrange that arrangement. He starts to play it. So she gets up and she sings the song. I mean, and that was how Dana and I met. Wow. And that became, you may remember, that was our theme song. Yes, we, right. We used to close with that song because that was the song that introduced the two of us. Yes. So I but, called, go ahead. No, I, go ahead, please. So I called Dana and I said, Dana, I got this offer. Would you like to host this night with me? And she said, before I could even get it out, yes, yes, yes. So I, we announced that we were going to do it, and immediately we started getting calls from people who wanted to be there. Uh -huh. So Joan, again, no reflection on her. It was just all of those elements. She was averaging about five or ten people a week, if she was lucky. Mm -hmm. We had 125 reservations on the book. So I called the iguana, and I said, Make sure that you are fully staffed because we are going to pack this room. Mm -hmm. We showed up. There was a line around the block. Mm -hmm. People were lined up to get up. Sumatsuki was collecting money at the door. People, yeah. were, people were angry. People were upset because there was one person waiting to get people in. They were not prepared for this. People were in a bad mood. Everybody, it, I mean, it was a free fall. Everything that could possibly go wrong that night went yeah. wrong. Jan Wallman, who was one of the top cabaret critics in New York at the time, came up to us and she, to Dana and me, she threatened us. She said, we didn't know what we were doing. She was gonna put it in the paper that this was the one room in New York to stay away from. Wow. And I said, Jan, please give me three weeks. And if I can turn this place around, then write about it. This is our first night. If we don't turn it around, write anything you want to, but mm -hmm. promise me you'll give me the three weeks. And she promised me she'd come back in three weeks. Then I went to the owners and I said, um, please meet with Dana and me um, in the next two days and let's talk about what went wrong and how we can fix it. Mm -hmm. We told the owners that we wanted to get tablecloths on all the tables. We wanted candles. We wanted real glass dimware. We wanted the room to look like a cabaret room. Oh, and we cool. wanted to put this room on the map. Yeah. And within two weeks, that room was the hottest room on Wednesday mm -hmm. nights. And for two years, we packed that room. Yeah, every Wednesday, night. every Wednesday, every Wednesday, that's for sure. And I just on a personal note again, I just want to say um, a, a heartfelt thank you to you and Dana, because you did not know me and you allowed me to get up on stage and perform. That was my first time in the cabaret really? yeah, to yeah, perform that was and your you opened the door. Wow. You opened the door for me. And I just want to wow. say thank you very, very much for that. Well, thank you. I, I didn't realize that that was the first time. Yeah. Yeah, but you, know yeah, what, you Richard, were You brought out a lot of things here. <laughs> you see how worth it it is. You know, you mentioned earlier on in the, in the program, you know, the kind of recognition of the cabaret convention, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Who cares? This moment where Tim Moss said to you, that was the first time I got to perform. Mm -hmm. My God. And I, I can't imagine how many other people you have been able to touch in that way. Mm -hmm. And that, my dear, is pure magic. Thank Absolutely. you. But you know what the secret is? Every single person, I don't care who you are, I don't care 
what level you are at. I have inter I have been very, very fortunate. You mentioned this in your introduction. I have in interviewed Academy Award winners. Yeah. I have interviewed Tony Award winners. I have interviewed people who have been at the very top of the business. I have interviewed people who are at the very bottom of the business. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Yeah, right. Everybody wants to be recognized. Thank and you. the thing, and the thing that is so remarkable is you interview everyone at the same, the same level, the same what you treat yeah. everyone with the same amount of respect, the same amount of, of enthusiasm. And I, I just love you for that. So Richard, tell us about Richard Skipper celebrates. Well, in just a moment before yeah, we get there. there. Oh, okay, go ahead. Oh, we're at our halfway point, Tim. I'm supposed to remind you. Yes, no, I know. I'm following. Okay, cool. <laughs> but I want to say something about that. When somebody says, oh my God, I met fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. I always say, well, they met you. Right. right. Absolutely. You know, that's Absolutely. just as important. So when, now, oh, when I interviewed Leslie Ann Warren last week, which mm -hmm. was truly oh. one of I my favorite her. people in this oh, business. Oh, I love her. Love her. When you look at her resume of all the people, and if you saw that interview, it's available on YouTube, folks. Mm -hmm. yes. If you look at that interview, here is a woman who has been in this business since she was a small child. Mm -hmm. She is still humbled in this business. Yes. She is not someone who feels that she is above it all. Right. She is, um, you know, and I mentioned in this interview, You've had the opportunity to work with, and I fill in the blank, all these names. When she made her television debut in Cinderella, think mm -hmm. about this. Ginger Rogers, right. Academy Award winner. Yeah. Holm, Academy Award winner. Joe Van Fleet, Academy Award winner. Uh -huh. uh, Walter Pigeon, Academy Award winner. Mm -hmm. um, Barbara Ruick, um, uh, Pat Carroll, all of these people, uh, Stuart Damon, all of these people that she's making her television debut with right. at 18 years old. At 18, amazing. And then, but I said, but Leslie, they were working with you. Absolutely. You know, it's just yeah. as important. Everybody wants to be acknowledged. Yeah. If you see a post on Facebook, just to take a moment to hit the like button. Or to share that, right? Content. We are totally um, agree. It, it takes it, it takes very little effort, just to acknowledge somebody. Right. And you know, we live in a swipe world. Swipe, yes. Swipe, swipe, swipe. swipe. Right. I Take like. I moment. don't like. I like. I <laughs> don't. We like. are. Yes. Yep. Yes. Now um, we're going to return to um, Richard Skipper celebrates, uh, but one thing that I want to get, I want to touch on. Again, in your past, there is so much, so much to unwrap yeah, with you. And unfortunately, we're not going to get to everything. It's again. a five-hour special, Richard. Your, I know, your I know. Remarkable, the incredible mini history, <laughs> amazing history in 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 our our industry. But which came first, your admiration for the actress Carol Channing, or your desire to be an impersonator of Carol Channing? I never had a desire to be an impersonator. Oh, ever. Wow. Ever, uh, ever, ever, ever. So even when I, it. even when I was doing it, I never had the desire to be an impersonator. Because you um, were brilliant, perfection. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, when I was performing in Provincetown, um, there's an article. Uh, there's so many articles. I've got a chest full of articles. One of the articles called me the reluctant impersonator. Um, <laughs> I was never really a part of the world of drag. Um, right. I was never really, um, I was never really embraced in that world. Um, I well, never you didn't do drag. You did an, a, a solid impersonation of, of an individual. Right. Drag right. a lot of times is, is all over the it's place. More of a channeling, uh, Richard. Mm -hmm. I would call what yeah. you did, you channeled. Right. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you both. I, I've talked about this in many other interviews, so I will give a very brief introduction. My introduction to Carol Channing um, came about because I saw the Lucy show in which Lucille Ball yeah. is impersonating Carol Channing. 
<laughs> and I used to mimic everything I saw on television. So I was mimicking Lucille Ball, mimicking Carol Channing. <laughs> and then I saw uh, the television special with Carol Channing and Pearl Bailey. And I realized that Carol yeah. Channing was this real, honest to God, real live person. Uh -huh. And so I started watching all these television specials I saw on the Muppets and, you know, and all these things that I would watch growing up, the, uh, the Love Boat and all these things. And then I came to New York and I, the first time that I saw Carol Channing was when Lynn Fontaine passed away. And I saw in the paper that Carol Channing was going to be speaking at her memorial service, which was open to the public. So I went to the oh, wow. memorial service at the Lund Fontaine Theater, and I was standing in front of the Lund Fontaine Theater, and Carol Channing and Helen Hayes and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Out. were standing in front of the theater, and I hear Carol Channing say to Helen Hayes and Douglas Fairbanks Jr., I have a table at, uh, at Sardi's. Why don't you come and meet me there? Oh my God. I ran to Sardi's. <laughs> as quick as you could. As quick as I could. And I spoke to the maitre d'. I don't know who it was. I know Sean's there now. I don't know who the maitre d' was. And I said, I'm a friend of Carol's. And um, yeah. uh, you know, I know she has a reservation here, uh, but could you put me at the next table, please? And they did. <gasps> And I'm sitting at the table next to Carol. And I sat there and I'm watching. Uh, I just sat there and I eavesdropped on her entire conversation. I love it. Move ahead many years later, Carol Channing and I are having lunch together um, mm -hmm. at uh, the boat house uh, in Central Park. And I told her the story. <laughs> and I mean, talk about manifestation. Yes, yes, yeah. that is a great example of it. What did she say when you told her the story? She said, I knew that you looked familiar. Richard, I have a very short clip that you sent. Can we play it? There we are. There we are. Oh, how yeah. fabulous. Amazing. Yeah. There, we are. there we go. How yes. Can we play the very yeah. short clip that yeah. you sent? Okay, you know, before before yeah. we play this, I just want to say that I had seen you perform yeah. at this show, and I swear to God, I walked out of there, and the first thing I said to someone yeah. was, I just saw Carol Channing yeah. in concert. <laughs> I seriously. And they, that, it was that yeah. incredible. Check this out. Oh, wow. Check out this Let's video clip. This clip. Oh, my God. <laughs> Till a gentleman took me out one night And after he taught me wrong from right We moved to the right side of the tracks <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, that clip, thank you Sherry Eaker uh, for- uh, Sherry Eaker from Backstage. Uh, from Backstage, yeah. that was the night that I won the Bistro Award wow. in 1998. Uh -huh. um, I had just started performing um, professionally, if you will, as Carol, and I, they had to keep, they kept me hidden that night, because with the Bistro Awards, you know that you're getting the award, so uh -huh. I was kept hidden. They introduced me. I came out and I performed, and Sidney Meyer was with yeah. his mom, and his, he told me that after I came out and performed, his mom said. She still got it, but she's starting to show her age. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's great. Oh yeah. my God. Oh my goodness. Well, now Richard Skipper celebrates. Tell us, oh my God, the, the list of, of people that you have spoken to. So many um, and, and again, because as, as an interviewer, when you talk to someone, you learn so much and it kind of, if you're open to it, which you are, it can change your perspective. You know, you get to know someone better. You, you hear their philosophies, you hear their way of thinking and it can affect you. So, I mean, you you have spoken to the top in all, pretty much anybody. all aspects of entertainment, right. film, television, cabaret, theater, Broadway. Um, Tell us about your show and what it means to you. Well, first of all, I wish that I could find another word other than interview. Uh -huh. 
Because right. I don't even like to think of it as an interview. I like mm -hmm. to think of it as a conversation. That's what I right. call what we do. It's a conversation. Right. I, yeah, exactly. Talk. That's what I feel like right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. um, before I sit down to talk to anyone, I don't like to, and just like today, we have not spoken, any of us, about what we were going to talk about today. Right. I don't know anything. So when somebody comes on, um, I always ask, as we did today, log on 15 minutes before showtime just so we can check the lighting and the sound yeah, once i see them i go okay i'm going to kick you off because i don't want to i don't know know how you're doing i don't want to know anything i'm going to save everything for the camera and for the audience right. mm -hmm. and my goal is that by the end of the show you and i are old friends mm -hmm. that is always Absolutely. my goal. Right. I never want to ask a question that's going to make them uncomfortable. I never want to take them down a path that's going to make them um, feel anything. Mm -hmm. But what I'm finding more and more and more, um, thank you to the gods, powers that be, that people are opening up to me and that people trust me and that people yeah. are telling me things. Um, Vivian Reed, told me things that she said she has never mm -hmm. talked about in an interview right. in, in her entire career. Um, you know, with everyone that they, we've gone down this path. Um, I've only had one person uh, question, an, a question that I asked after the interview is over. Mm -hmm. um, but I, and this was a producer and I think that she, and it was a, a well-known show on Broadway and a movie was made from the show. And I I asked her from a producer's point perspective, if she could tell the fans why choices were made for the film. Mm -hmm. I wasn't questioning her choices. Decisions. Right, right. I just wanted her to address the sure, fans. Sure it. Right. The three of us sitting right here know why she made those choices. Mm -hmm. But those people right. who are not in the business right. don't know that. Mm -hmm. And I think she got a little upset that I wanted her to defend her decisions. Right. That right. was not my intent. But that was, right. of course, a miscommunication. And often when you're interviewing celebrities, and I know Tim and I do this on this show, I, I don't want to talk about the up there. I want to bring it to a human, interactive, empathetic mm -hmm. level so that not everybody knows everything about that person. And I want to pull out the human stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the best thing you told me today, Richard, was about Terry. Okay. And you calling your <laughs> father to pick you up because that's, guess what? That's yeah. the volumes for so many, so many people. So many mm -hmm. of us have been in that position where we were the kid that sat alone at lunch or we were the kid that was the odd person out. And now we're rocking our lives out. But Let's not forget what brought us there in the first place. You brought the, that out here today. Speaking of what now brought us there in the first place, I want to say for anyone who's watching right now, either live or later, um, there's a lot of noise out there right now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, anybody who has a camera, a computer, a microphone is doing a podcast or oh, a yeah. live stream. Everybody, and they are on 24 7. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of them, thousands of them, thousands of them. Every time I feel, and maybe the two of you feel the same way, and this goes back to the blinders and staying in your lane. Mm -hmm. Every time that you feel that you've gotten a get, oh my God, I can't believe I got this person. Then you will see 20 people have gotten that same person. Mm -hmm. There have been people that I have booked on my show, and then I see that they've done four interviews in the same day right. when you're trying to get an audience. Right. Yeah. And it becomes very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So now to me, and maybe you two are going through the same thing, what makes it stand out among the rest? What mm -hmm. makes it a little bit different? So right. I am not interested in, in the, and then you did this, and then you did that, that me and then you did this, mm -hmm. and then you did that. I right. mean, you know, I've done hundreds of interviews in my lifetime. Anybody who knows me knows that I've done Carol Channing. Uh, they know that part of my life. Mm -hmm. They know, you know, a lot about what I've done. Um, 
I'm interested in the new things that come out um, mm -hmm. in an interview. So I've loved being here with both of you today um, and those new aspects that come out. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I always, with each of my guests, study. I do the mm -hmm. research. You should yep. see yeah. Absolutely. the books that I read every single day. Books are coming from Amazon daily yeah, mm -hmm. and the research that I do. And then once I sit down, um, I just listen to them. Um, I interviewed um, a, a motivational speaker on uh, Saturday and his mom passed away oh. four months ago. And he was telling me about his mom and he burst into tears. Of course. Mm -hmm. And I didn't interrupt him. I let him cry. Let him be human. Yeah. And I let him be human. And I didn't I didn't say I know how you feel. Mm -hmm. Cuz I don't know how he feels. Right. Just let him be in that moment. Mm -hmm. And afterwards he paid me. This is a man who has 11 number one bestsellers. He does ta uh, all these TED Talks. He does show after show after show. And he paid me the greatest compliment. He said, you allowed me to have the space. Mm -hmm. Allowed me to just be in that moment. And that's what we all need to do. We need to allow every person to be who they are. Agreed. Right. So totally agreed. Richard, I yeah. just, I always yeah. want to bring in our audience. I just want to go through just real quick. These people all tuned in. Evan Lawrence, thank you. Glenn, uh, Glenn. Charlo. Uh, and Evan Lawrence also said, I loved going to the iguana. Right. Oh, he, he loved we loved that. having him. Clover Welsh says, you are amazing. Oh, it's so much better with glasses on. Um, uh, so uh, excuse me. Tell them all to subscribe to Richard Skipper Celebrates on YouTube. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> Richard absolutely. Skipper Celebrates, you can subscribe. We've got um, the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, loving it. Apollo Cabrera, yes. Teresa Sabin from Teresa Sabin Marketing loves your smile. There you go. Yeah. And Glenn uh, Rose, Apuzo, Richard, you are wonderful. Egypt, Labasia, love you guys. Love you, Egypt. Joe Preston is watching. Glenn, funny how we never discussed this, Richard, but you moved in with Danny on 910. I moved to New York on that day in 1983. <laughs> <laughs> out here. Maureen Ferrier, hey, Tim Marsh, you go, guy. Make them rattle. Um, I don't know what that means. Joe, Joe Preston says, Richard is amazing. Yep. Jenny Bookwater, hello, sweeties. Uh, Daryl Weinbrandt, Richard is a genuine, I love this, genuine, yeah. caring, talented guy. I'm happy to know him. Love that's it. Great. Love you, people. Yep. Yeah. And again, that's you, you affect people so in such a positive way. And what a couple things, because as we're, we're winding down, but a couple of things. Um, it was interesting when I asked you about Richard Skipper's um, celebrates. And you pulled out not necessarily what you consider a mistake, but uh, uh, out of all of the interviews that you have done and all of the amazing people that you have spoken to and all of the, the that that was what you zeroed in on. That's a very human thing too, right. is to, is to uh, like, oh no, and maybe I shouldn't have done that. And I mean, I've done those, had those many times before. But again, you have interviewed over a thousand. Unbelievable. Thousand. Can I share a story before Absolutely. you wrap up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, we're not wrapping up yet. Yeah, we but... can't wrap up yet. I have a million more things I yeah, want right, to Yeah, right. I know. Me too. <laughs> so share the story. This, on, is the, the this is the Carol Channing story. Okay. And this is a story that Carol Channing told me in the back seat of our car. Yeah. So Carol Channing was the toast of Broadway when she did Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Mm -hmm. She was on the cover of Time Magazine and Life Magazine at the same time. She was the only the second actress that this had happened to. The first was Tallulah Bankhead. Wow. Interesting, uh, they both shared a birthday. Um, and they, uh, but she was the toast of Broadway. Dorothy Kilgallen, who was a very powerful critic at the time, wrote a scathing review of Carol Channing. And she said, I don't get her. They should call the show Gentlemen Prefer Amazons. She is like a bull in a china shop. She's wow. clumsy. She can't act. She can't sing. She can't dance. She's not good on the eyes. 
you name it. Wow. It. Who was she watching? Right. Well, she was watching Carol Channing. Well, it began right. to affect Carol's performance. So every night before Carol would go on, she would have these panic attacks oh, because God. she began to think, what if the audience sees what Dorothy Kilgallen sees? And so one night, Anita Luce, who wrote Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, came to see the show. And Anita Luce came backstage during intermission. She's, okay, Carol, what's going on? What's going on? This is not the girl that we cast in the show. And she told her what was going on. Mm -hmm. And she said, listen, for every person who likes you, there are an equal number who don't. Mm -hmm. The people who like you are the people who bought tickets to see you. Absolutely. And they are the ones who deserve a good performance. Right. Mm -hmm. So forget about this woman. You're on the cover of all these magazines. Give them Carol Channing. That's yeah. what they want. Right. And, you know, and Carol Channing said that to me because at the time I was telling her about something that somebody had written about me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And she said, Richard, everybody's not going to like you. And you got to realize that. Right. And now, you know, I, it hurts. Yeah. I'm human. I still want them to like me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, un, I hit the delete button. I, right. I, I don't engage them. Yep. Yep. So much of that need for approval though, as mm -hmm. a performer. Oh yeah. Right. It is, it is almost like ingrained in you. It's that whole audience. Oh, that Sally field. They like me. They mm -hmm. really like me, but each one of us, experiences that and mm -hmm. i have i've worked very hard to like do exactly what you said not everybody is going to mm -hmm. like that is not easy to accept that but you you know what as a performer you have to give your 100 percent. you can't let that other stuff get in the way that's right you absolutely absolutely i richard i wanted to do well i yeah, I just I just have two things. One two, is one is back to books. Right. Um, one is that, that you um, had a couple of book clubs, one of which that I'm I'm a part of, and it's uh, spiritual um, uh, about spiritual growth, and I am so grateful for that. Thank you. And you are just like the perfect person to do that, because <laughs> again, we're all evolving, we're all right. growing, we're all trying to figure this stuff out. And um, I just also want to say how much I appreciate appreciate being See you tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, tomorrow yeah. morning, bright and early. <laughs> but also the book. Go yeah, ahead. Andy. That's what I want. The book that you have coming out, Call on Dolly. 2024. Can you fill us in a little bit about that? Well, I i mean, right after I stopped performing as Carol, Carol Channing told me that I should write a book celebrating the women who play Dolly and a few good men. A couple oh. of men have played Dolly as well. Oh. Um, and I, so I have been, in, I have interviewed a lot of people and my goal was for the book to come out to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Dolly. And there was a particular person out there, if you're watching, you know who you are, who told me, don't do anything without me. I am, I, I, I know the connections. I've got the, the uh, access to the photographs, everything. I put my eggs in his basket. And he kept saying, we'll get together, we'll get together. He strung me along for several years and kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Putting it off. And then one day he left a message on my machine saying, I think your ship has sailed. Nobody's interested in your book. <gasps> and uh, I called him back and I said, well, who have you spoken to? We've never okay. met to talk. We've never really talked about it. You mm -hmm. haven't seen a sample chapter. You haven't done this. We haven't done that. Da, da, da. Well, 2024 is the 60th anniversary of Dolly. Um, if it happens, it happens. It's not a top priority of mine right now uh, because I'm so focused on Richard Skipper Celebrates. Of course. I am focused on that and where that's going to uh, get me. In the meantime, there's callondolly.com. You can go to it. Yep. Um, it's uh, I call it a living book. There's nothing like it out there I because I keep it up to date. When there's new information out there, the only thing that's missing is... Um, I have not been able to interview any of the recent Broadway dollies. 
-hmm. I don't know if it's because of non-disclosure issues or anything from the recent Scott Roden production of Dolly, uh, <laughs> but I have not gotten any of those Dollies. If you're watching, give me a call. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I am not about gossip. I'm about celebrating your performances. I, yeah. I, want to talk I don't. I don't know anyone that has the passion for Hello Dolly right. than Richard Skipper. Right. You're you're the you're you're the person. And and this book needs to be yeah. done. And my I, holy I, grail I, interview, Barbara Streisand. Oh, Barbara Streisand. Oh, Barbara yeah. Streisand. <laughs> <laughs> Call but me. When, but when this again. When this person doesn't want to pursue it, move on because it it is something that is coming up, and especially this this landmark year of sixty yeah. years of it. I think they should have an expert do this. So I, I'm in support of that. So. I I agree with you, Tim. <laughs> this is something, and I did go to your site, Call on yeah. Dolly. I absolutely, and I love that you you have that. But I want to see it made into a book. And I'd you are the to person to do it. So from my mouth to your ears and to the heavens above. I have to ask you about the pandemic. I talk about this with everyone. Mm -hmm. To me, it was devastating that, that such a thing could happen in our society. You yeah. came out with a show called Creativity in the Age of COVID. A little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, a very interesting thing happened uh, this past year. Um, I won't get too much into the weeds with this, but somebody reached out to me uh, that wanted to represent me as management. Uh, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> okay. It didn't work out. Okay. But one, that thing, one thing that we'll talk about that after the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing that did come out was that they recommended um, that I get in touch with Dr. Judy Bloom. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed her one-on-one. -on -one, and then it was suggested that we do a show called Creativity. Uh, well, a show bringing the arts and therapy together. And we came up with the title Creativity in the Age of uh, COVID. We did the show every other Thursday throughout this past year. And then we took off because Dr. Bloom went on a whirlwind honeymoon going to Santorini and Europe and Greece because she got married. In the middle of COVID, and there yeah. you go. Yes. In uh, COVID, and um, the plan was that she, uh, we're, gonna, so we're coming back on September 9th, Excellent. and the show was going to be called um, Creativity in an Ever-Changing World because we wanted to move on beyond COVID. But guess what, folks? It ain't over. That's so right. It ain't over. The show is important. I was on the show. I think mm -hmm. getting that message out there, uh, you know, the pandemic, they're still not dealing with what it is mentally done to people. Mm -hmm. And um, right. shows like that, especially for people in the entertainment industry, writers, artists, it is a really very good vehicle for us to have to listen to what what we need to be doing, how to move ourselves ahead in spite of what's going on. The, the unfortunate thing uh, right now, which is not truly being addressed in a way that it needs to be addressed. And I don't want to hijack your show with this issue. Cool. But um, the biggest issue with COVID that we are never going to get past until it is addressed with the bullseye is that it has become politicized. Oh, yes. Until yes. that issue is yep. eradicated, mm -hmm. we will never get past this. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we are living in a divided country. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. saw this morning where a judge took the custody of a child. Uh, I mean, a mother was uh, her custody of the child was taken away from her because she refused to get the child vaccinated. Um, that's what it's come down to. Wow. Wow. And, wow. Uh, yeah. you know, and we are living in a very dangerous time. Yeah. On everything. Danny and I are scheduled uh, to go uh, to start. Nairobi mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and to Kenya in February. 
And I don't know, I, I keep saying to him, how in the world are we gonna be able to take a trip of this magnitude in the world that we're living in now? We mm -hmm. were scheduled to go to London last year to see Hello, Dolly mm -hmm. with Amelda Staunton. Of course, that production did not happen. Um, I'm hearing that travel outside the United States and in the, to some countries um, may be restricted except wow. for essential travel. Mm -hmm. um, it may come to the point where we're not able to travel to other states unless it's wow. essential travel. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very dangerous situation. And I think that we need to have, and I know it's not something that people want to address, but we may have to have a national mandate in order to take a pause, four weeks, let's get this taken care of and right. let's move on. Right, right. right. I, I, I agree too. And we'll talk further. I can tell you how you can safely go to Nairobi and Kenya. I have people that are doing it. I've worked there myself. There's ways to do things safe, but to your point, Richard, yeah, we have, we have a lot of work to do to, to get us through all this now. Mm -hmm. I do want to say we are broadcasting or I'm broadcasting today from Pangea. From Pangea, a restaurant on the Lower East Side. Richard, you know them well. They have an incredible cabaret room. They have all kinds of performances coming up in the next weeks. Uh, they are just rocking it out. You can come here on any down, time. Down and, below is the link for GoFundMe for them because they we, they we, have always right. they have always been supportive of the arts, and them. it's time for us to support them in return. Yeah, and and that's what it's all about. Pardon the pun. One hand washes the other, and we all have to support each other yes and you're what thank you so very much for tuning oh in to if these walls could talk thank you. with my uh, with wendy uh, host wendy stewart and tim moss and, our, and if i could um, leave one last comment oh, as darling me if i would say i twist a little stir a little him a little her a little shape a little mold a little some young chap gets sold a little <laughs> when i use my fist a little some young bride gets kissed a little pressure with my thumbs matrimony comes when and you know the rest <laughs> oh, I love it. oh my god oh, again our guest is the amazing richard skipper firstly i just want to say thank you so very much yeah. for all that you have done and contributed to and our so community to our so artistic cool. community and, and so everything that you're doing and everything that is coming up we are we just embrace you. We love you, and we appreciate you. you so very much. Subscribe, you subscribe, subscribe. You, you can find you can find out everything about Richard Skipper at richardskipper.com, and do subscribe to his his uh, his YouTube, um, which is Richard Skipper Celebrates, his amazing show where he has just interviewed so many incredible people. Absolutely. And I will let you know, we we have a new newsletter that just started today. Oh. We promise not to spam. If you go on richardskipper.com and sign up for the newsletter, um, every nine days, we will be sending you an updated list of what's coming up as far as the interviews are concerned. Wow. Perfect. 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 And um, now where can people find Richard Skipper Celebrates? Uh, by uh, going to richardskipper.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about Instagram? Yeah, uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I am ubiquitous. <laughs> Honestly, you are in more places than me even. You just Google Richard Skipper and yeah. it's like one-stop shopping and it's brilliant. If you Google me, it's like the e-ticket at Disneyland. Do they, still <laughs> Do they still have the e-ticket? I don't think so. I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking about that the other day because I went to Universal Studios a oh. couple of days ago in Florida. Yeah, and and I was thinking about the the A B C and D and E and yeah, exactly. The but e you are the E ticket of entertainment. Right. <laughs> thank you so very much. We thank love you. you so much, Richard thank Skipper. Thank and you. And thank you, audience. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> I'm not sure. Chauncey, we need some Chauncey. There we go. <laughs>